between my eyes What do the find? Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach if you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, consultants, create additional revenue streams and stop just trading time for dollars. Go to Rise25.com, learn more. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. Make sure to check out our dream product ladder template, which helps people plan their dream business on one sheet of paper. I am very excited. This is a long time coming, and we've spent many times at conferences together. Today, we have Kim Krause Schwamm, one of the top direct response copywriters. She's worked in the industry for more than 25 years, creating breakthrough copy for companies like Boardroom, National Geographic, Healthy Directions, Rodale, Soundview, and that's just to name a few. She was integral in launching a nutritional supplement company, Healthy Directions, that went on to become a multi-million dollar business within the first few years alone. And she was the first female copywriter to have a control at Boardroom. Kim, thanks for joining me. Hey, it's great to be here finally, Jeremy. So early on, I mean, this became, you launched Healthy Direct, helped launch Healthy Directions in it did really well out of the gate. What were some of the things early on that would be valuable for people to know about launching this multi-million dollar supplement company, essentially? Well, I mean, like I said, the the first thing to remember That's Bob is, Hutchinson. Um, I thought I had that turned off. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was just talking about you. Um, the, the two things that I mentioned earlier were very key. One was um, you, we were already going to um, a really good audience. And we're, in some ways, they were already following his leadership. So we were going to the best possible audience, which were already people that were customers for another part of our business. And uh, I thought I had that turned off. Oh, well, anyway. Um, and then the second part of that was, um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, well, you said the, you know, the doctorate of following. And you know, obviously there was probably a built up base of people that follow the doctor. And oh yeah, there was some demand already for yeah. that product. But I guess how you would apply that to your own business is, or if you were starting a business, is there a group of people who are kind of like your low hanging fruit that you just go after first, right? Um, th- that's a good starting point. The other thing I was going to say was because we had a consumable or renewable type product, building that whole process out right out of the gate. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's the same thing what people do now when they build funnels. You know, make right. sure you have that all built out. You know, you get okay. Now we've got these upsells. We've got this. What are you going to do beyond that? Right. You know, and then how you're going to nurture that, and how you're going to get those reorders, and have that all flushed out. Yeah. You know, in advance, and mm-hmm. have that ready to go. What did that look like early on? Like from the insert, them buying like three and get one free, to what happened after that? The insert. Okay, so. We would get the initial sale, and then they would get something in the box, you know, with their order. It either, you know, with a coupon to use for a future order. There'd also be some kind of warm and fuzzy letter, and you mm-hmm. know, kind of reaffirming their purchase decision. Here's how you want to use the product to get the best results, etc. And then you would get again. This is all pre-email and internet. So I love it. Buy, yeah. But you can buy all this obviously to the internet. Yeah. You know, then we and it'd be a lot less expensive. And then we would send a series of three different follow-up mailings to each buyer of the core program or forward. And it was to get that next order on the way. You know, you want to keep going. You're already noticing. You're doing great things for your health. You know, if you want to keep enjoying these benefits, the longer Mm. you take it, the more you're going to see. So, you know. It's a nurture sequence. And then we would get them into the, and then we would have one, one of those would be more targeted on the auto ship program. You know, just about what a great program was, peace of mind, worry-free, it's totally flexible, you can change it any time or, you know, all that. But just, you know, we had a whole series that we would lead them through to get them to either reorder or get on the auto ship program. And then as we in- introduced other products, we put together, it started off as a small, tiny little catalog 
now I think it's like a 36 or 42 page catalog that they have, but you know, with all the different products and we put that in the box as well. And then we would also mail that as a standalone mm. to those people and we'd get huge response. That's, that's really amazing. And would you drive them to a phone number or how would they end up purchasing? Mostly phone or mail order. Again, this is, we're talking, this is all seems like so archaic almost now back in the 90s. But again, this is all well, I feel like people, the same marketing strategy yeah. you can apply online. And you can also incorporate some mail where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, if you even if it's somebody who came to you online. Because yeah. people, you know, stuff gets lost with the emails. I mean, people will respond to them. Yeah. Mail, the mailbox is a lot less crowded place these days, and things stand out more. Yeah. And I feel like, too, the older people who want whatever it is, joint or joint supplements, or, you know, they may be an older crowd or are used to that type of purchasing, like you said. Right. right. Um, I want to, Kim, talk about... Um, you were the first female to hold a control boardroom. Um, you tell me about you get a call from Brian Kurtz. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of a funny story. So I knew Brian just from when I worked at Phillips. I had met him a few times. He was, um, you know, the guy. He was like the main list guy up at boardroom. And I ran into him after I had been freelancing for a couple years at, at the the infamous Newsletter Publisher Association conference in D.C. And I think I was. Um, I was like maybe five, four or five months pregnant with my second child. So I was at that phase where you're like, you know, is she just, has she just put on weight or is she pregnant? Like, it's, <laughs> you know, is she fat or, you know, yeah. you know I don't want to, Kim, gee, what happened since you left Phillips? I mean, I don't know, you know, I hadn't seen him in a while, <laughs> right? And like you've grown that, since I've so left As a seen woman, you. I'm kind of just feeling like I'm kind of in that feeling a little dumpy and whatever, you know. But I, I was talking with him with a group of people, and I'm like, hey, I'm a copywriter now. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. And he's kind of brushed me off, and I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, because I, you know, I, again, it was like the ultimate dream to be able to write for Boardroom, right? That was like, I want to I want to be one of those copywriters someday. And uh, so I figured nothing, you know, nothing came out of it. And then, of course, I told you the story about what happened with personal finance, and um, after my, my second try, I, I beat Jim Rutz and got this big control. So a few months after that, uh, the marketing director from KCI was at the financial marketing roundtable meeting down in Florida, which is where all the big publishers get together to talk about what's working, what's not. And Brian asked um, the marketing director, so who's got your personal finance control? And he's like, oh, Kim Krause's got it. And he's like, he couldn't call me fast enough. I, <laughs> I was on a train actually to go to a conference in New York that he was going to be at. And he calls me on the train. He's like, hey, can you write for Boardroom? I'm like, okay, you know. So it, it, I think it just took, you know, that my his respect for me is like, oh, she's not just like, one of the things I think I had to grapple with a little bit, even with people that I, where I was working at Phillips, because I, you know, I think people thought, oh, well, she just stayed, she just wants to stay home with her baby. And she's kind of, it was almost like I was kind of mommy tracking myself, you know, by jumping off the corporate ladder. Because I was, you know, pretty high up on the corporate ladder. Yeah. I walked out of a six-figure a year job right, in yeah. 1998. So I think I sort of, I think some people had the perception that, oh, you're just kind of doing this like part-time while you, you know, stay home with the kids. And that's all well and good. But I, I was approaching it very much like a full-time job. I still yeah. had an nanny, you know, et cetera. I mean, I was working yeah. you know, full-time at this. So I think that, you know, he then he realized, oh, wait a minute. She, like, beat Jim Rutz. She's, like, she's serious, serious. Yeah. Like, okay, so um, that's how I got my break with them. Why would they want to share that? Wouldn't they want to keep, like, some secret weapons and not share it with everyone? What do you mean? You're like, you know, oh, like the different the companies saying who table. won the who won the control. I'm not telling you. Like, I'm keeping Kim for myself. Yeah, um, well, I'm glad they didn't do that. Um, I think that they all benefit. It's like, yeah. um, I, I, and that's a good lesson, I think, for your audience as well. Um, I think that there's, a in most industries anyway, there's plenty of opportunity for everyone. Yeah. And you actually benefit from from kind of helping your competitors. It, seemed, it would seem way. they seemed very open all the time. Like, oh, yeah. this person just won the control and like, you know, them wanting to, to hire that person. I mean, there's some companies like Healthy Directions, for example, they don't want me to put any of my controls up on my website. They don't even want, to, because they try to keep it secret who writes for them and has their right. controls, but everybody knows, you know. Right. <laughs> but yeah, they do try to keep it. But most companies do are pretty open. And one thing I do remember from way back when we first started the Healthy Directions business is, um, 
there was a company, and I think they're still around, a huge company called Enzymatic Therapy, and they were a very, you know, very big, su successful supplement company, and they had some ties and relationships with uh, Julian Whitaker. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my my boss and I flew up to Green Bay to meet with their the owner of the company and their their doctor formulator. And they were very open with sharing, like, you know, because we were in the very early phases of our business, like what was working, what wasn't, That's and really interesting. manufacturing, we toured, you know. And I remember at one point, uh, the president of the company saying, you know, there's there's plenty of opportunity here for everyone, you know, and the more er, the more people that succeed, the more we all succeed, you know, and, and not just financially, but in terms of they really cared about their mission, right? right. They really thought that this was a better way. So if you really care about your mission and you really care about... Um, you know, growing your business, I think when you, it's like all ships rise, you know, you can, you can help yeah. other companies. And I think the companies that are, that tend to hold more things in and yeah. they, they will suffer ultimately. Yeah. And just like, just like those the ones that, you know, don't take risk and don't encourage their employees to take smart yeah. risk. Yeah. You know, you, they will, you know, ultimately, you know, limit themselves. That is the saying of Rise 25, rising tides lift all boats. We 100% you know, yeah. believe in that and that works. Um, Talk about, you know, Kim, the challenges of navigating family and business, because that's not an easy, um, I don't find it easy to navigate. So give me your words of wisdom on okay. then <laughs> and then up to now. Yeah, I'm still figuring that out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think the key thing is make sure you have the support you need. Um, and I'm just saying that it doesn't apply even if it was a guy that was staying home and let's say the wife was going off, you know, to the corporate world. In this case, my husband's always had a job outside the house and I, you know, for the last 19 years have worked from home. So, um, I've always made sure that, I mean, I, I was telling this to Ben Suttle the, a few months ago, I probably haven't cleaned a toilet in 22 years <laughs> and that's good, you know, but I mean, it doesn't make sense for me to try to do housework, for example. That's one thing, like if I can delegate it out, you know, let me delegate it out, right? I mean, for a period of time, I had somebody come in twice a week when, you know, when kids were younger and right. I'd have people doing my laundry and, you know, I, I didn't have to worry about as many of those household tasks. Um, but yeah, so I think as a woman or somebody working from home, if you're still trying to do all that, um, I'm going to close my window for a second because they're yeah. starting to move on. Speaking of delegating. Yeah, you're like, uh, we've... <laughs> Speaking of delegating. So, you know, get the support you need. Um, and the other thing is, you know, you have flexibility. I mean, I, I can work early in the morning if I want or I can work late at night. Yeah. If I need to go take my kids to school or to a doctor's appointment like when they were younger, you know, I can just make time for yeah. that. So it does give you a lot of flexibility yeah. to, to be self-employed. Yeah. Delegation, it sounds amazing. Some people have a hard time with it. They're just so used to doing certain things. I well, think. I, and that can be part of your, your relationship with your spouse or partner, too. You yeah. know, one thing I learned early on um, is, and I think a lot of women do this. I mean, again, I guess I'm talking to the women in the audience, but maybe some men do it, too. But, yeah. like, your husband wants to do something to help. Let's say you finally get to that point where he's like, what can I do to help? And then he does it like not the way that you would do it. And then you criticize him. And then he's like, I'll never, you know, he's never. <laughs> that never happens in marriage. Criticizing. Come on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know I, I never do that to my husband. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, so I, one thing that I learned uh, after I had my first child and I was still at Phillips and I was going through this period of, there was a lot of changes in what my role was at the company. And I was trying to decide if I, did I want to take the leap and become a freelance copywriter? Was I going to stay there? Actually, I had some other job offers I was considering. So I, I decided to just go off to a, uh, a spa in Arizona for like three days or four days just so I could go away and think, you know. Uh, I had my son was like maybe eight or nine months old, but I actually left him with my husband for like, because you know, a lot of new moms just are like, oh, there's no way I can even leave him for the day, you know. But, you know, my, my husband stepped up and he took care of him and, you know, and, and I was able to go away and come back. But that also was a big part of being able to trust him more that, hey, it's okay. Like, it doesn't have to be all me. You know, my husband is actually capable. Although there were those days I'd come home sometimes like, so what did the kids have for lunch? Oh, were they supposed to have lunch? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> They're supposed to nap? Phone what are you husband talking at about? noon and say, did you feed them? Um, 
I, yeah. I'm sure I've been guilty of several of those type of things <laughs> that you're like, are you kidding me? So. <laughs> so part of it is just with anything when you're in management, and I've been in management positions, you know, you got to learn to be able to delegate to your employees and yeah. let go. And sometimes things aren't always going to be done perfectly the way you would do them. Mm-hmm. Kim, opportunities for training. <laughs> this has been absolutely fantastic. I want to thank you. I have one last question, but where should we point people towards to check out online? So they can go to my website, which I, at this point anyway, I haven't updated in like eight years. Which really? I think mentioned. it looks pretty good. Mschwam. dot com. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot For more. For eight years, that's that's good. Well, some of those have are still mailing or have been mailing until recently. It's timeless, just like your website. <laughs> yeah, I and would encourage I, anyone to go into the portfolio section. Um, I mean, there's, there's a wealth of of uh, information here, but it's it's really golden. So, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I also have another site where people can get a free uh, report that I put together. Um, and it's the A List Copywriters Manifesto, but it has seven success principles for winning promotion. Mm -hmm. And you can get that at the marketing superpower mm -hmm. dot com. The marketing superpower dot com. Yeah, so it's got the okay. in front of it. So the yeah. marketing superpower dot com, mm -hmm. and you can just opt in to that list. And I, I'm not going to email you all the time because I'm just too busy. But if I do have something interesting, I will email you. But you can definitely um, that way you'll get that report sent to you via email. Yeah. And you'll also, if you're a woman who's an entrepreneur, a marketer, a copywriter, you'll find out details um, via an email about how to sign up for my my free private Facebook group. Called the, the Girls, Girls Club. Club, yeah, which is really growing, and we've got a great community, and we're actually having a a free call that I'm doing with people tonight, uh, where we're going to be talking about negotiating strategies and communicating effectively with clients. And we also sometimes do like Girls Club meetups, and we have every month we have a girl on fire that we uh, celebrate who's doing some cool stuff uh, with her uh, career. And it's just a great community where you can just ask questions and get support. Yeah. So I encourage all the women to check, check it out. out. Check it out. Um, Kim, so my last question is, I mean, I could go on for hours and hours and <laughs> go through every single one of your promotions, but I won't. I'll spare you. Um, the, on the, the marketing superpower.com. So I was able to check it out and, um, I figured maybe you talk about one thing that we haven't talked about so far that would be important um, that, you know, obviously helps create winning promotions. What have we not covered? I mean, obviously, they can go to the marketingsuperpower.com and get all seven and, and get your information. What's one that we haven't talked about so far? Yeah, that's... I think research is my secret weapon. Mm. I exhaustively research things. I mean, I spend at least a third of the period of time that I work on a promotion probably doing research. Mm -hmm. And it's either, you know, especially with supplements, you've got to dig up the studies. You got to, it's, if there's more than one nutrient, you got to figure out which one's got the best story that maybe you want to highlight or lead with. Um, you want, you know, all the proof, the credibility, you want the quotes, you want to know about who's endorsing it. I mean, I could go on. There's so much stuff to research. I, I even call up and interview customers who've been using the product, mm. talk to them. Yeah. Um, research is, is huge and that can really... You can tell when someone's written a supplement promotion and they have not done adequate really? research. Yeah. The untrained eye. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really interesting. You look at the side column of the, uh, the issue um, and it's just some amazing, I mean, would you call them bullets or what do you call them? Which like, one are you looking at? I'm looking at the, I just keep going back to the how First. an ingredient found in celery can give you memory like an elephant. Oh, I don't have that one in front of me. Um, um, why decades of toxic exposure are taking a toll on your brain. You know, there's a bunch of the ones on the side, the amazing memory secret of the ancient Rishi. So yeah. you have a bunch of these yeah. um, that... Yeah, you just try to figure out, like, and those I, 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 I pretty much write at the very end because it's after I've written my copy and I'm going back, okay, what am I most exciting things to kind of pull mm -hmm. people in and hitting the most benefits. I have a funny quick story on that, though. Yeah, go. Um, so I've written a lot of promotions for Soundview, which is their advanced bio-nutritionals business. Mm -hmm. And Paris Lompropolis is their copy chief. And he's, over the years, written several for them as well. So he had a, a joint uh, supplement control. It might still be the control that they've been mailing for, for quite a while. And I, know, I got it in the mail one day. And I realized that that little table of contents, 
you know, sidebar on the front cover, it had all the bullets for my um, bone support control promotion. And somehow they had gotten overlaid, maybe the same designer had mm. done, and had put those on that cover and left them on the joint one. But they were all about the osteoporosis bone support one. But it was still working. It was still working. <laughs> and so they were loath to change it because, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it was something they were going to, you know, because, you know, when you have a control, which is like a scientific experiment, you don't want to, if you change one thing, you don't know, well, is that going to tilt the balance? And then you right. do any kind of big change, you always want to test it first. I think they might still be purposely mailing it wow. with the wrong bullets there because it's working. <laughs> <laughs> That's Isn't that pretty funny. Only you would like discover that i guess so but joints bones you know they're all kind of it's the same. related <laughs> in someone's sense kim thank you so much everyone should check out we'll link up all those sites it's an absolute pleasure your oh. your uh website is a gold mine so i hope people oh, check it you. out so thank, thank you, you so for all you do great talking Appreciate with you it. today all right bye-bye what i got you can't buy it resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand